everybody. Uh, Aaron Brightman here uh, after Rutgers uh, suffers, in my opinion, the worst loss of the season to Nebraska, 82-72. Uh, I know they lost to, uh, to Temple early in the season. That was out without McConnell and Mulcahy. Uh, you know, the Seton Hall loss was ugly, um, but defensively they were tremendous in that game. This was the first game all season, I felt, where they just... Um, you know, they, they were really bad defensively. Uh, Nebraska, 20 of 27 from two-point range, uh, which is, you know, kind of unheard of. Um, you know, Nebraska, 12 threes, but I thought it was the 20 to 27 inside, 40 points in the paint. Um, it was just, you know, it was, it was, I thought, the worst defensive performance of the season. Offensively, they were fine. Uh, I would have liked to see them attack the rim a little bit more. I would have liked to see them get Cam Spencer more involved. He did take 11 shots, 3 of 11. But, I, you know, I didn't think they were, especially in the first half, I felt like they, they could have kind of gotten him involved more. Um, but offensively, you know, I mean, you score 72 points. If you're Rutgers, you usually win that game. So uh, to give up 82 to Nebraska, who, you know, is playing well of late. They've now won 3 of 4. Uh, but the, you know, the wins over Wisconsin, um, and Penn State were at home. This, uh, was on the road, uh, and, uh, it's very disappointing. Very disappointing. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Um, but I thought it was the worst loss of the season. Uh, you know, you're now, uh, things are now snowballing in the wrong direction. 0-3 since the loss of, of Moat Mag, the injury. Season-ending injury to Moat Mag, and, uh, this team has, you know, uh, sadly fallen apart, uh, since then, um, I thought, you know, Indiana and Illinois, two really good teams, uh, you know, people still chirping at me about Illinois not being that great. Well, I mean, they beat, uh, Texas and UCLA, who are two of the top 10 teams in the country <clears throat> and they beat them on a neutral court. Um, but you know, I, and, and I've already had people say to me tonight, but listen, after those two games, I did not think it was time to panic. Uh, those are two quality losses. They barely moved in the net. Um, they played, uh, you know, the Indiana game. They played well for the majority of the game. The Illinois game, they played from, well for the majority of the game. Uh, they had a, a terrible stretch, uh, the 19-0 run against Illinois. Um, and then you had, uh, couldn't close it out against Indiana. Tonight, they, they did not play with the same uh, urgency. They did not play with the same uh, fight. They did not play with the same um, intensity. Um, you know, none of that was there. Uh, and that, to me, is the most disturbing thing. Um, and why I, you know, I, it's, it's, you know, it's fair if you want to panic now. Uh, you could say, you know, are they ever, I mean, people are, people are saying on Twitter, are they ever going to win again? Yes, they're going to win again. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I will not use the panic word, uh, from my personal, uh, standing. Um, but yes, very, very concerned. Uh, you know, I thought we'd see more leadership on the floor. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, I love this group. Um, you know, I thought Cliff, I mean, it's funny. Cliff finishes with a whole home 13 and 12. Uh, he had five blocks too. Defensively, he was very good in the second half. Defense was better in the second half, even though they ended up well. They ended up giving up forty two in the second half. I mean, they had stretches where they were a lot better, but obviously, I mean, Nebraska still had a ton of shots. Got too too many easy baskets, too many open looks on three. But you know, I mean, Cliff, he he's he well, what was he shooting wise? He was uh, five of seven. So Cliff's got to get more shots. Um, He's got to be more assertive. Um, you know, he played fine. But again, this team needs him to dominate. And he, he really struggled defensively against Walker, uh, especially in the first half. Um, you know, I thought Caleb, you know, defensively, he pre played really well once again. He had four steals. Now the third Rutgers player to ever have uh, 200 steals in a career. Uh, joins Miles Mack and Eddie Jordan. Um, you know, he finished with 12 points, 5 of 12 shooting. He took most of the good shots. I thought he had eight rebounds. Um, you know, I don't really have any gripes with him. I thought, I thought, you know, it's funny. I mean, okay, he had 12 assists, but I, I, it's almost like you, you, he was deferring too much. He was deferring too much. I, and I thought from a leadership perspective, 
you know, he is the vocal leader of this team. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think, you know, they've lost their connectedness without Mag. Uh, right or wrong, uh, people want to say, you know, it's one player. How can you fall apart? Of the one? Well, you know, I think we're seeing how integral Mag was to everything working. And... Sometimes all it takes is one player to lose and it kind of falls apart. And that's what it's looking like right now. Um, you know, I, I've said since uh, the beginning of the year, you know, for me, I mean, Mag brings you some very obvious traits in terms of, you know, being able to defend multiple positions. Um, you know, he's good in transition. He cleans up around the glass. Uh, you know, he was starting to really be efficient shooter uh, inside the arc. Um, but I always thought Mags, one of his best qualities was he brought an edge to this team. Um, I've said it since day one this season. Uh, he, he, he brought a physicality and an edge that this team has needed. I think I, I even brought it up last year how, you know, he just he plays at, a, at an energy level uh, and a bounce level and just, you know, that that they don't have otherwise. And it's sorely missed right now. It's sorely missed. Um, I think that his interior defense is, is, you know, I think Cliff really misses it. Um, you know, that helps ID that Mag was able to provide. I think, you know, rebounding wise, they're not rebounding terribly. They did. They were plus three tonight, but, you know, they're not attacking the glass the way they, they, they were um, with Mag. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, they've lost the swagger. Um, you know, when I thought, We've seen Mulcahy be very vocal and, and, and huddle the team up and keep them organized and keep them connected uh, plenty of times this season. You know, he's extremely capable uh, and we're not seeing that right now. And I think, you know, he only took three shots. I mean, he had one shot most of the game. He made a bucket late. You know, and he, listen, he had uh, 12 assists, three turnovers, so four to one ratio. It's really good. He made some good passes. He looked for teammates, but... You know, this team is at its best when Mulcahy is creating offensively, uh, not just facilitating, but creating. And um, he looked hesitant a few times he got in the lane and got in the paint. And um, I don't know. He just, uh, he seems to be missing something uh, since that MSG game where he was brilliant down the stretch, brilliant down the stretch in that game. And uh, he's looked... Uh, I don't want to say disillusioned, but he, he doesn't look clear in the head, if that makes sense. He, he looks, um, you know, I don't know. He's, he's just, uh, he's not seeing things in the same uh, kind of clarity, I think. Uh, and it's I, I, I do think, you know, uh, I hate to criticize him, but I, I think this team needs him as a vocal leader. And that means huddling them up and, keeping them focused, keeping uh, this team uh, energized. And we've seen him do it so many times. And uh, it's not happening right now. And I thought that the body language tonight was terrible. I thought it was really bad. Uh, there was some pouting going on. It was just, it was a pretty uh, all-around ugly performance. Um, you know, really disappointing. And uh, I understand why people are upset. I understand why people are panicking. Um, I understand the concern that things are, you know, in full implosion mode. You know, I'm not there personally. Uh, there's five games to go, you know, and that's why you play all five. And perhaps something as drastic as this loss. And, you know, to clarify, Nebraska is a quad three loss. It's a bad loss. Um it's not a catastrophic loss as much as people want it to be. Uh, and I don't mean that people are, you know, Rutgers fans are rooting against Rutgers. But, you know, there, there, there's some uh, obvious and expected fallout from this uh, in terms of fans uh, giving up. Uh, you know, um, I do get that aspect of it. I mean, I've been a fan for 40 years. So, you know, we've seen plenty of collapses over the years. I, I, I still believe that, that this is not going to be that type of collapse. I mean, the good news is the metrics, the resume coming into this was really, really good. They had, they did, they took a huge fall in Ken Palm tonight. 
Uh, they went from 16 to 27. So the net tomorrow, we'll see what happens. They're definitely going to fall back. They were at 21 today. Uh, so they'll probably be back around 30. You know, that's still very firmly in. You know, they're, they're still a top half seed. But yes, obviously, you know, they can't they can't lose out and, uh, you know, still have, you know, the, it's obviously going to change their, 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 their NCAA tournament chances. You got you to gotta get off the mat. You got to get off the mat. You got to reinvent the wheel a little bit. Um, that goes to the coaching staff. That goes to the players. Just in terms of what the way they're playing isn't working, right? So if you're trying to play exactly the same, but just minus mag, you know, I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but, you know, it's Hyatt stepping up. Hyatt had a huge game. Uh, I was at 24 points. You know, Simpson was good off the bench tonight, five of seven shooting, 10 points, but the bench didn't give him anything else. And, you know, that, that, that definitely hurts. Uh, and it's really on the core group of this team to, to, you know, it's, uh, time to, to, to regroup and step up. You know, that's Cam Spencer, that's Cliff, that's Caleb, that's Paul. Uh, Andre has been playing hard. And, uh, you know, was really aggressive tonight and made some big shots. Uh, Simpson is fearless coming off the bench and he said some big shots. Um, the the, the uh, other four just seem to be playing with a heaviness, you know, and um, I get it. I mean, it's depressing. Like losing Mag is just, it's a, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, from a human perspective to, to say like one player shouldn't mean all or, you know, that we know how they feel losing their player, uh, a player like Mag. Uh, you know, it's clear this team is extremely connected with him and they're really struggling without him. And uh, that's not to say it's right, not to say it's wrong. It's just a fact. And, you know, it stinks. It stinks that this has happened, but it's happened. And um, the longer they dwell on it and aren't able to adapt and aren't able to move away from it, they're going to struggle and they're going to lose games. And it's really on the coaching staff to figure things out now. Um, I think Wisconsin at Wisconsin is an opportunity. I don't think that that's a daunting game whatsoever. I think that's a good matchup for Rutgers even without Mag. Uh, and this team's got to get off the mat. And, you know, that's what it comes down to. Uh, they, need to find, they need to find a cohesion that they, they have clearly lost. Um, and they have to kind of redefine what their identity is going to be. Uh, and if their identity is going to be that, you know, um, they're, they're no longer even, uh, you know, defensively, I mean, they, they got to get back to, <clears throat> I don't think at this point we can expect them to be elite without mag, but you got to be good <laughs> defensively. Uh, and, uh, they, they weren't by any means tonight. I mean, Nebraska, give them credit. They hit a ton of tough shots, but they got uh, way, way too many open looks too. So. Um, you know, and I think thought the key, I mean, uh, Tominga and, uh, Walker got their points. We knew that was going to happen. I think Wiltshire, uh, having the game he did, uh, the New Jersey, uh, the Plainfield native, I think he had four or five threes that killed him. I thought that killed him. I thought going in, you were going to let Tominga and, uh, uh, Walker, you know, they were going to get theirs, but if they, if they were the only ones to get it, you're going to win. And, um, so you know, very uh, upsetting, disappointing, depressing loss, no doubt. Uh, we've been through plenty of these over the years. But, you know, this team had a certain ceiling. And, you know, right now it doesn't look like it's they have the same one. And uh, that's just a fact. But, you know, th there's still too many pieces here for this team to just utterly collapse. This is not all of a sudden a bad team because they lost one player. But they haven't found their path yet. And they haven't regained their footing. And they can't play exactly the same way without Mag. They just can't. So they got to figure out a way that's going to work without him. And maybe that means, <coughs> excuse me, it's you know not as high of a ceiling. But um, the way they're playing right now, you know, the way they play tonight isn't working. Um 
again, you know, I didn't think they, I mean, Indiana, they played, and Illinois, they played uh, pretty well for over half of each game. But it's like those losses deflated them and they need to get a spark back and uh, they need to get their confidence back and uh, no better time than the present. There's still five winnable games out there. You pull it together, you win, you know, three. Uh, they're going to be, you know, they're going to make the NCAA tournament. No problem. Um, you know, you go one and four down the stretch. <clears throat> it's going to be dicey, you know, in terms of 18 wins or 17 wins. Uh, you know, they probably still have relatively strong metrics for 17 wins. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's going to get... It's going to get a little, well, it is pretty interesting right now, not in a good way, but I think I honestly am going to take it one game at a time. And because I, I do think that there is opportunity for this team to adapt and be different and still be good. Um, it's going to involve Cam Spencer being more, uh, you know, more of a scorer. It's going to involve Cliff going from reliably good to, to he needs to, to dominate at times. Paul's got to be more assertive. Paul's got to lead. Paul's got to create. Caleb, I think is, you know, Caleb and Andre, I, I, I think they're playing their roles. I really do. Uh, I think Simpson's playing his role. Um, I think those three guys is where the opportunity to get more out of is in Cliff, uh, Paul, and Kim. And I think if Andre and Caleb play extremely hard uh, and are, you know, being, um, you know, uh, effective with their strengths. Um, it's the other three that really need to come through. I think Simpson needs to keep doing what he's doing. And, uh, you know, listen, I mean, yeah, they're going to need more from the bench. <clears throat> you know, Weaver had a three early. Uh, he struggled, you know, defending Walker. And, uh, you know, I think at this point, Whatever you get from the other guys on the bench is kind of a bonus. Uh, I think it's got to be that core six. You got to ride with them. I think they got to, you know, are they getting burnt out as a team? You know, I did think one one thing today I, I, I didn't love was that the full court pressure. Really pretty much most of the game, I thought that Rutgers struggled to get back. I thought it allowed Nebraska to speed things up. Uh, and they, they, they looked just quicker, had more urgency. And I thought the full court press, you know, hurt Rutgers at times a little bit. And, you know, listen, if they were effective in it, I get it. I, I understand why uh, Rutgers wanted to press. But they they weren't, they, they didn't uh, execute it as well as they needed to. And I thought in the second half, maybe they would lay off it more than they did. Um, and kind of pack it in, in the half court. So it'll be interesting to see what the coaching staff does moving forward there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Bad night, uh, disappointing performance. Again, it was the kind of the, the lack of killer instinct. This was a game that was a perfect game to bounce back and, um, you know, uh, kind of regain their footing. And uh, they did the opposite. They did the opposite. They went backwards. And you needed that leadership and killer instinct out there tonight. And they didn't have it. So does that mean they're going to go 0-5 the rest of the way and, and lose the Big Ten tournament? It's over and it's going to be a collapse. You know, I, 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 I honestly think it's cliche, but you got to take it one game at a time. And uh, those that want to be, you know, that didn't like that I said it was embarrassing to say you were panicking after Illinois, I stand by that. It was It's embarrassing to after Illinois and Indiana, two really good teams on the road. Uh, now, I get it. You want to panic? Go ahead and panic. Uh, this was a game that, you know, Rutgers had no business giving up 82 points and losing by double digits at home to. Um, it's really poor performance. Um, that being said, uh, every game is an opportunity and I do think Rutgers can re rebuild their identity. So we'll see what happens here. I'll play more coverage this week. I appreciate everybody listening and watching, uh, here at the Scarlet Faithful.